up YouTube? Welcome back to another installment of the GS850 Scrambler build. In this episode, I am going to be removing this big old speedometer here. This thing just looks way too 80s for me. And I know the 80s were a cool time. They were a very cool decade, but there were some things that came from the 80s that were not cool. And this speedometer is a great example of one of those things. So I'm gonna remove it today and replace it with a brand new Chinese sleek modern speedometer and tachometer unit. It's just one unit and it's gonna look so much better than this big old ugly thing does. This thing's almost six inches of pure ugly and I just can't stand it anymore. So I'm gonna take this thing off and replace it. And the new speedometer tachometer is electronic. So it's going to be, I think it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge figuring out how to wire that in and make that work. Because as some of you may know, the 1981 GS850's speedometer and tachometer are both analog, which means they both are mechanical and are driven by little wire gears. So let's go ahead and get started. Take this thing off and put the new one on. Link in the description to my eBay page. I got tons of motorcycle parts and stuff on there. So check that out, buy some stuff if you want. And if you message me and say that you're a fan from YouTube, I will personally sign the motorcycle part for you and send it to you with my autograph. So yeah, anyway guys, let's get into this video. Okay guys, um, at this point in real life, I am pretty much finished with putting on my new speedometer, but I had to put this important announcement at the beginning of this video. I just recently found out that when you are wiring up a new digital tachometer to a bike, any kind of bike, um, you want to wire it directly to the spark generator. Now your spark generator may have one to three different wires coming out of it. Um, it's different on all bikes. You need to just find out which one to it, which one works basically. So connect your tachometer wire to each of the spark generator wires until you find one that gives you a pretty stable tachometer RPM reading. It was really hard to figure this out. I just had to uh, pretty much do trial and error because almost all the videos I saw on YouTube told you to connect it directly to the spark plug wire or the coils. Uh, I tried connecting it to every wire from the coils and none of them worked. So I am telling you guys if you're going to do this, connect it to the spark generator wire, not the coil wire. Okay, let's get on with the video. First thing to do here is to remove the old tachometer and speedometer cables. And that's what I was talking about guys. This uh, goes into the engine and it spins and then spins some kind of system in here making the RPM gauge work. I don't need that anymore. And the speedometer looks exactly the same. Nothing exciting here. The only thing holding it on now is the wiring harness. I knew I was going to have to do this eventually, I just didn't think it would be this soon. But it's time to take off the seat and the gas tank. Now I just have to unplug the harness here. Oh shite. It's already a pain in the ass. Doesn't want to be unplugged. Dirty. Come on you. Got it. Finally. And I finally got it off. Okay guys, so here's the old speedometer. Off the bike and in one piece. Let's go ahead and open up the new one and compare it to the old one. This is the new speedometer. Let's open this up. Okay. And there's the new speedometer and tachometer all in one. And look at how much smaller it is than this one. Just look at this difference. It definitely looks a lot less 80s and a lot more now, which is what I wanted. 
Let's see what else came off this thing. Some paper. This is the new speedometer thing. It goes on the wheel and it measures like how fast the wheel's spinning. Connect RPM wire to one of the triggle. Let's go ahead and get this on the bike. I can already see I'm gonna have to make some brackets because these are where the bolts for the old um, the old speedometer bracket were and when I put that in position like that the bolts are about right here so I'm just gonna have to make a little extension piece for this so I've got this old CB750 speedometer bracket here and if I just cut right there and there I think I'll be able to just bolt that on and then bolt on the new speedometer. Okay, so this is gonna work just fine. So let's go ahead and get these brackets on. Okay, I've got those snugged up. Let's see if it fits. There's one, and huh. so this is hitting the headlight, and I guess that's a good time to introduce the second part of the video, which is moving the headlight down. Okay, I have loosened up the brackets, now I'm going to try to just slide it down. I don't know if it's going to work like that, but we'll give it a shot. Looks like it is moving down. So there we go. Now the new speedometer will fit right up there. One in there. And looks like it fits well. Now I just need to tighten it up. The next step to do is my least favorite step, which is wiring. Now we have to wire this thing up and make it work. This could be quite difficult, guys. Uh, it's getting pretty late tonight though, so I'm going to do the wiring tomorrow with a fresh head and a fresh mindset. I think it'll look better if this headlight is up kind of flush with the bottom of the speedometer. So I'm going to move it up a little bit. I actually changed my mind, guys. I am going to start with the easiest thing, which is the speedometer. Okay, so we are down here at the wheel. Um, I'm going to have to make a bracket. I'm gonna bolt it right onto the front axle. It's gonna hold this somewhere around here, probably right there. And then the magnets, I'm gonna get one of them or both of them, I don't know yet. And those stick right on there or somewhere around there okay guys and next up we're going to do the part of this job that i hate the most which is the wiring so these are the wires coming from the new gauge cluster unit and we need to somehow match them up with the old wires from the bike so to do that we need a multimeter so we can find out which wires are which, that helps a lot. And then tape and a marker so we can label the wires as we find out what they are. And then a pair of pliers. And you need to do yourself a big favor and print out the wiring diagram for your bike. I went ahead and printed mine out here. Then we also need the wiring list for my new gauge cluster. So we're going to use these two things to match up the wires and get this thing working. Okay guys, and I've got all these wires labeled now. Um, the reason I like to label them is because it makes it a lot easier when you're connecting everything. And it's so you don't keep second guessing yourself and looking back at the wiring diagram. You just have to look at it once, get them all labeled, and then you can connect everything. 
Okay, so now we just have to put these in this connector. And to do that, we have to take a good look at this chinglish diagram here. And you gotta make sure you're looking at it this way because you see they drew it that way. So let's go ahead and plug this in and see if it works or not. All right, moment of truth. Let's turn the key and see if this thing works. Okay, it turns on. Looks like the left turn signal works. What about the right? And the right turn signal works. What about the high beam? High beam works. Everything seems to work, so let's go ahead and start working on the tachometer. Let's find out what these buttons do. So it looks like this one changes the color. And what do we what do we like? Oh, we like green, definitely. Green bike. How do we change it to miles per hour? Let's hold it in maybe. Step one, press select for about three second. Three second. Two three okay it's blinking and then let's press set change to change it okay we change it to miles i guess that's it what do we do now oh and we can actually change the clock down here too okay and next we have to connect the neutral light the neutral indicator in the gear position wires to the wires from the dash and as you can see those are definitely not plugging in to each other anytime soon so I'm gonna have to cut these and then I'm going to have to get some wire and extend them so that they can get to the connector I don't know if it was designed like this or if we just got really lucky but the stock old connector actually fits in the new one pretty much perfectly so we're just gonna have to extend these wires and then it'll plug right in and we've got all of the wire extensions connected here to this old connector let's go ahead put it in the new dash connector there turn the key and it says neutral there so it works okay, it's in second it's in third fourth so we actually got really lucky on that one and it works perfectly. On to the tachometer and that's the last thing we gotta do. So to find the spark generator wires, you need to look at the wires coming out of your engine. Um, there aren't that many, so you find them and you look at the wiring diagram that you have and you try to find out the colors from the spark generator and then you find those. So in my case, it was white with green stripe, white with blue stripe, and yellow. And I ended up having to connect it to the white with green stripe. That was the one that gave me a good tachometer RPM reading. So now that I have that figured out and I have everything roughly connected here, I'm going to just clean up the wires, uh, zip tie them together, connect them back to the frame, and then this job will be done. Okay guys, so I have cleaned up all the wires. I had to extend <clears throat> I had to extend them because the uh, wires that came from the old speedometer unit were about this long and the new one is about this long. So I had to extend them a good bit. Uh, that's what all these red wires are here. But I cleaned it up pretty nice. I'm going to go ahead and put the tank and the seat back on and then I'm going to test this thing out. And I don't know if the speedometer is set up right, really I have no idea, but I am going to figure that out and then I will fix it if I need to. So let's go ahead and get this thing back together. Okay guys, bikes are put back together, let's test this thing out. So. I am ending the install video of the speedometer with a moto vlog road test kind of thing. About the speedometer, what I ended up doing was getting the magnets, bolting them on, well I glued them onto the hub bolts here, and then you, have, you really have to make it close to the sensor. Like you can't have them far apart at all or else it won't pick it up. And then what you have to do... You go in the settings of the speedometer and you do that by holding in the select button with the bike off, with the key turned off, holding it for three seconds and then turning the key on. And it'll bring up the settings menu 
and then from there you can change the circumference um, so you have to measure the circumference of the magnets you have there so basically measure the distance from the center of the axle to the magnet and then multiply it by pi do all that stuff and then enter that and it has to be in metric because this speedometer was made in China obviously. Why I have my phone hooked up here, I'm testing it to see how accurate it is to make sure it's to make sure that it is reading the same as this. So because I know this is accurate because it's GPS. And if you haven't noticed yet, the tachometer um, kind of jumps around a little bit. I don't know why it does that. It works good enough for me. It took me a long time to figure out how to even make it that good. It does work pretty well, but when it's idling, sometimes it just drops down to zero. Uh, so I don't really know why that is happening. But I'm gonna go out on the road and test this thing out. Well, so far, my GPS speedometer is reading six and this is reading three, so we might have a problem. Just maybe. Okay, we have a problem. Okay, so since it's reading half of what this is giving me, I'm going to go ahead and into the settings and adjust it. And I'm pretty sure that's because I used two magnets. I thought it was programmed that way, but uh, using two, it seems like it's giving me a low miles per hour reading. Um, so maybe you were just supposed to use one. I don't know why the kit came with two magnets, but it's fine. I'll adjust that in the settings and we'll see if it fixes it. And I think I'm going to have to change this to 12 because that's basically half of 25. So now it's clearly too fast. So now it's too fast. I'm going to go into the settings again and I'm just going to make it 20 and see how that works. Well, maybe I'll make it 17. That sounds like a better number. I'm just guessing here. That seems pretty accurate, guys. 20, 20, I mean they're a little bit off, but they seem really close. And GPS does have a little bit of lag because it has to beam a signal off of the freaking satellites up in space, so obviously it's going to have a little lag, but honestly guys, this seems good. I'm going to leave it at that. All right guys, so now I got it pretty synced up there. It's looking good, the bike's looking good. And I've got this phone mount, this uh, sneak peek to my next video, which will be up shortly after the speedometer video is posted. But this is gonna be the end of the video guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. Um, I definitely enjoyed making it. I think this new speedometer looks a hell of a lot better than the old one did. Uh, the old one was huge and it just looked so 80s and analog and nasty. So I got this new low profile digital speedometer and tachometer setup. And you can even change the color, see that? Blue, red, purple, green. Well, two shades of blue. I'm gonna keep it a green because the bike's green. I think that looks good. Stay tuned for my next video. I've got tons of videos on this bike coming up soon. It's starting to get nice again outside and I'm kicking out the motorcycle build videos. Hopefully you guys learned something from this video. Maybe you wanna do this on your own. I think it definitely is a good thing to do on these older bikes. It makes them look a lot more modern and new. Anyways, I've said enough. Stay tuned for the next video. 
Peace out. <laughs>